Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we are going to be talking about how to make your home feel cozy. This is how to make your space feel really just comfortable and cozy warm during these gorgeous, or not so gorgeous, fall and winter months. It's sort of a companion video to a video I did a couple of years ago, but I really focused in that on sort of the feel, the, the feel of the space and really focusing on those senses. This one is going to just be five tips on how to make your home feel cozy. They Some of them are harder to implement than others. Some are relatively easy and you can get started right away to make your home feel gorgeous and luxe and fabulous in a place you want to curl up in all winter long. So let's get going. Before we hop into today's video, I want to take a moment and thank today's sponsor, which is Drio. I recently got the HM7135 Smart Humidifier and it's a real game changer. In the winter, the air gets dry here in Vancouver in my apartment. And so having a humidifier helps with my skin, nose and throat dryness in a huge way. It really kind of helps you also like not getting sick and just adds to the moisture. You know, it's just so dry in the evenings. The humidifier is super easy to use. All you have to do is fill the water compartment up, plug the machine in and then everything else is controlled from the Drio app on your phone. Within the app, you can check the room's humidity, adjust the temperature of the mist, having precise control of the moisture levels and build your own humidifier schedule. I will also note that I love how the HM7135 is compact and sleek. Its modern design makes it blend in seamlessly with the rest of the room. And Drio's Black Friday campaign is going on right now, so you better act fast. Some of these deals are only offered for a limited time, making this the year's lowest prices that you're gonna get on any of the Drio products, including this humidifier. So if you wanna get this humidifier for yourself or a friend or family member this holiday season, check out the link in my description. Now let's get back to other ways you can make your home feel cozy. Okay, first thing on how to make your home feel cozy, Let's talk about flooring. Let's start with the base, you know, right from the ground up. Okay, let's talk about flooring. So two things here. One, material choice. Let's talk about a renovation. If you are selecting materials for your flooring, especially in your living area, some materials are cozier than others, okay? So really hard surfaces, and I'm looking at you concrete, and I'm looking at you tile. Those two are not very cozy in my opinion. They are very hard surfaces. They are not gonna do you any favors in terms of sound absorption, which is kind of really important in the winter months because if, you know, sound from people's voices is bouncing off of very hard surfaces, it tends to create a really hollow effect. It's kind of like you know, when you leave your home after you kind of sell it or you you move out and you know, all your furniture's gone and you know, your, your sound, your voice just bounces around the whole place. It doesn't feel really cozy. It doesn't absorb the sound and it makes you feel really hollow and empty because it is. And uh, that's not very cozy and warm. So porcelain tile and concrete floors, they bounce the sound back and forth, not gonna feel particularly cozy. And also they just look cold and lifeless because they are, right? There's no life there. They feel cold underfoot. They're not particularly like soft and squishy. And so I would say if you want to get a warm and cozy home, I would personally air for hardwood floors, or if you want, you can get away with laminate or vinyl. Again, it's not gonna have that same level of kind of life there, but it is a pretty good trick to sort of fool your eye into thinking that it's really warm and cozy. Some, of course, are better than others, so definitely shop around to pick the best choices there. But engineered hardwood or hardwood floors are gonna do a great job of giving life to your space. Now, they are hard surfaces, that's true, so they're not gonna particularly help sort of with sound absorption, but they are really just gonna give some life and some warmth to the space, especially if you're dealing in those warmer tones. So not talking about those sort of grayed out mid 2010s, you know, gray vinyl plank where everything was gray washed and white. We're not talking about that. I'm talking about warmer tones in your wood, which is naturally what wood tends to be. But for the most part, they lean warm in the orangey browny sort of yellow space of the color wheel. So choosing those woods are really going to help kind of give life to your space. And the other one I would really say is carpet. Now carpet is controversial. I know a lot of people hate carpet. That's fine. I get it. Some people think carpet is gross. Some people think that it's really great for kids. Like it's a controversial material. But what I can't deny is that it is a cozy material, right? So it is something that feels really cozy. And if you love that feel, especially in a basement, especially in a bedroom, it can be really wonderful. It's not great in a bathroom or a basement, right? It is a warm and cozy material. It does feel squishy underfoot. It is a nice material in that respect. Now, regardless, this is my second piece to this, is that despite any of those materials that you choose, although I do think material selection, as I said, does matter, rugs. Rugs are your friend here. If you want to make a space feel warm and cozy, even if you've got those cold, lifeless sort of cement floors or you know porcelain tiles going down put rugs in different areas okay and choose the right size rug so in your living room your front two chair legs uh, and any all your different furniture pieces they should all be on the rug or if you want to go for something a little bit more luxe a little bit more grand especially in a larger living room you can put all the furniture legs on the rug get an appropriate size rug for the space you don't want to carpet the whole room so don't you know if you've got a small apartment don't get this giant rug that's just going to go edge to edge okay that's not what we're going for you want a little bit of some white space kind of going around the edge of the rug but you want all all the furniture legs to be in contact with that rug. You don't want something too small. 
And that's gonna help your space feel warm and cozy. It's gonna be nice underfoot. And no matter what hard surfaces you have, concrete, tile, hardwood, vinyl plank, laminate, whatever, a rug's gonna really help you. Also, think of using rugs in unconventional rooms as well. So hallways, kitchen, putting them on like the front two posts of the bed on a rug can be really beautiful. It can be really nice to sort of get out of bed and you've kind of got something soft and squishy under your feet. So definitely rugs are gonna be your friend here and they're also gonna help with that sound absorption that I talked about. So starting from the flooring, material choice matters, but no matter what the material, consider a rug as well. Okay, next up. So we did the flooring. Now we're gonna go up the walls. Let's talk about walls. Okay. Okay, so I would say the key here is going to be variety. Having some variety in your walls rather than just plain boring white walls is gonna make a huge difference. So if you're a little bit more of a minimalist and you don't really want a whole ton of stuff on your walls and you kind of want to avoid that empty feeling, you can still be a minimalist and not choose white. So that's an option, right? Choosing something that's like a darker, richer color is gonna draw those walls in. And I know you might be thinking, ah, but that's gonna make my space feel really small. Not necessarily. It's just really gonna make your space feel just really cozy, right? I always think humans love being in sort of big wide open spaces, but we also like being, we also like to den, you know? I think we just like to sort of cuddle, especially this time of year. So drawing the walls in can make a space feel really warm and cozy and really comfortable because, you know, white has a tendency of just making it feel like your space kind of goes on forever, creating that really open feeling. It also really helps with bouncing light, any natural or artificial light that you have in the space, really bouncing it around the rest of the room. But that can also make it feel really open and really hollow at the same time. So a darker color can really help and adding some of that variety in terms of, you know, moldings. If you don't necessarily want to put a lot of artwork there, moldings can really help. So I have a lot of paddle moldings in my wall. I'm a big fan of the paddle moldings, but paddle moldings, chair rails, all those things are going to make a space sort of feel like it's got more life to it. It's not going to feel as kind of blank and like you're living in a museum. Now, if you're not a minimalist or you just like putting this different artwork or different, you know, decor pieces or things on your wall or whatever, that's wonderful as well. So choosing artwork that's going to add a lot of variety and a lot of life to a space is really going to go a long way when dealing with your wall. Also, of course, choosing alternate materials as opposed to just using paint can be really helpful, right? So maybe you're putting like a vertical slat wall or maybe you want some of these, you know, you're, you're going to get some gorgeous millwork that's going to go on your wall. I mean, isn't that amazing, right? So picking out sort of an area that's like a dis defined sort of space, say something like a little niche would be really cute. Or maybe like you've got a little nook to put like an office-y sort of area, like your computer desk or whatever that you want to do. You know, putting that and putting some beautiful millwork there. Again, you're putting wood on the walls. It's going to add a lot more life. It's going to create a lot more depth and it's going to make a space feel a lot more cozy. Those natural materials always go a long way because it just mimics nature and it doesn't, you know, those shiny mirrored surfaces, those artificial man-made materials, they just don't make us feel like warm and cozy, you know? You're going to need some natural materials because those materials really speak to us, I think, as humans and make us just feel like we're kind of close to nature. They're very calming, they're very relaxing, and they're definitely very cozy. Wood is, for me, the ultimate sort of cozy material in my personal opinion. Okay, so next up, we talked about the floor and we talked about the walls. Let's talk about the stuff that goes in it, okay? So I want you to focus on warm, soft, plush furnishings that are in your space, okay? So I know I just mentioned wood is my favorite material, and it kind of is, but like when you're dealing with this stuff inside your place, I would focus, yes, on wood, but I was also really focused on those soft sort of linen, cotton, jute, wool, these materials are cozy, they're warm, they're great for the sound absorption that we just talked about earlier. Things like drapery panels go a long way at absorbing sound and also just adding that depth of sort of cushiness to your space so it doesn't sort of feel so cold and lifeless. So yes, we're gonna need some hard furnishings in our space, right? You're gonna have probably, you know, wood in sort of your case goods. You might have some stone in your coffee table, construction of your furniture pieces, your bed, your cup, out, your side chairs, your dining table, your dining chairs, whatever. those things might be made of sort of those harder materials because obviously those are really needed and it's important to contrast that with some softer materials as well. So having sort of those plush materials really go a long way to sort of make a space feel much more cozy as opposed to just everything always being a hard surface all the time. You know, it's kind of like when you go into an Ikea for like showroom and everything's like that Ikea wood, like everything sort of this the, the, the plain sort of melamine and everything just feels like it's hard, but it doesn't have any life in it. And so it just kind of just feels really drab and it doesn't feel really cozy in my opinion. I also see some of these places with sort of mirrored finishes. It doesn't absorb any sound and it doesn't really kind of make a space feel plush. And having that contrasting of materials of sort of those warmer fibers really makes a big difference. So even just to give you a quick example in my own home, right? Just back there is when I selected the chairs for the dining area, I had a metal fixture 
up above, which is not warm and cozy. And then I had a beautiful, rich wood Sundays furniture uh, table, which I love, which is in walnut. Love it, love it, love it. Decided not to put a rug underneath, okay? I have hardwood floors. So when I selected my chairs, originally I was gonna go with something that was just sort of plain wood. But I didn't like the fact that I was getting a hard surface in the pendant, and then I had a hard surface right there in the table, and then I had a hard surface underneath. There wasn't anything that really felt plush and cozy. So when choosing the dining chair, I decided to opt for a dining chair that had a cord seat. And even just having that material just gave some warmth and life to the space and created something a little bit softer. And I think it just really softened the overall dining area. And to me, it looks really beautiful. So I selected a material choice there that was in contrast to the hard surfaces that I had. Now, I think that you should do that in your own home when you're looking at your bedroom, even your bathroom, right? Your living area, your kitchen, whatever, is to balance out some of those harder surfaces with some of these softer pieces inside the home. It's gonna make a space feel a lot more cozy. Okay, next let's talk about lighting. Okay, lighting is so important. Okay, we've dialed in the flooring, we've got the walls, we've got the stuff inside, they're cozy, they're plush, we've got wool, we've got cotton, we've got all these great materials, but lighting is gonna make a huge difference because without lighting, Without lighting, there is nothing. Okay, that just felt really deep, much deeper than I probably intended to be in this video. Okay, lighting is so, so important. I would, few things. Number one, let's talk about lighting temperature. So you've heard it here before, kids, okay? Lighting temperature, the warmer you go, the more soft and cozy and lovely that it's necessarily going to be. Now, I understand some of you don't want it to go too yellow, and I get that, but choosing something that is not the white hospital lighting is going to make a massive difference. You could have all, you could take all of my tips in this video, but if you've got white hospital garage lighting, lighting in your living room, I can't save you. Okay, I can't save, it's not gonna save you. You need something a little bit warmer. Now, just even just going to like a daylight bulb, okay? I, I beg of you, like even just going to that is going to make a big difference because a lot of those light bulbs that you get at Home Depot are going to be meant for a garage. They're meant for a office. They're meant for a emergency room. They're meant for an asylum. They're not meant for your living room. I, I don't know where asylums get their lighting, but I'm pretty sure it's from that section of the Home Depot that you know what I'm talking about, okay? We're trying to go for something a little bit cozier, something a little bit warmer. So that is gonna make a huge, huge difference. Also, putting things on dimmers, you don't always have to go full blast, you know? Sometimes you go to like a restaurant. Well, you know what, D dim lighting, like it really matters. Like, you know when you go to a restaurant or even a club or something and then they turn the lights out at the end of the day? It makes a huge difference, right? <laughs> when it's two in the morning and they're, or four in the morning or whatever and they're shutting down the club and there's like, everybody turns on the light. It makes a big difference in terms of the atmosphere of the space, okay? So that's like your place dial it back a little bit. We don't need to go full blast on the lighting all the time, okay? So turning it down, it's gonna give that little bit of cozy. It's gonna make everybody look a lot more flattering. I can guarantee you that. So next dinner party, definitely turn down the lighting. Putting things on dimmers, there's no excuse anymore. You got smart bulbs, you got apps, okay? I don't have to tell you what those things are. You figure that out yourself. But you know, you got options there on how to turn that down so that you're not sitting there with the blaring hospital lighting spotlights on people's faces. Also, Lighting sources, okay? We're lighting them around the room. We're not just doing the big light in the center of the room. Little lights like this, this little guy, this little guy. Look how cozy he is. Look how cozy he is just sitting over there. Isn't he a dream? Okay, so he's cozy. I've got a lamp over here. We've got a, you can't see me, he's out of frame, but we've got a beautiful little light over here. So task lights and accent lighting, you know, not necessarily just going with the one big ambient lighting, but clustering our lighting sort of around the space is gonna make a huge, huge difference. Multiple lighting sources in a room, rather than just having the one bulb in the center, the boob light that I told you to swap out a bunch of times, but you haven't done it yet. <sighs> told you before. Two sconces if you want, right? Two pendants on either side, or even just a cute little lamp. Like I got this little table lamp here from Article. It's a little cute little warm little travertine. Look how gorgeous he is. He just sits there with a nice little soft glow, beautiful in the evening, right? Love this little guy. Also, shades make a really big difference. So we're, 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 we're diffusing the light this way, as opposed to just having the bulb, which I know you're looking at the bulb back there going, you didn't diffuse that light. Cool, whatever. I'm a hypocrite. Fine. So sue me. But you know what? Diffusing that light makes a huge difference. Having uh, an exposed bulb is going to be a little bit more jarring than going with something a little bit more diffused where you're actually going to be filtering out that light. It makes a big difference. So lighting matters. Without light, we are nothing. And those are my tips. Definitely take them and run with them and your space will instantly feel cozy, even if you listen to nothing else in this video. Okay. And then my last tip for you is going to be to add greenery. I know the plant people, the plant gays are in the comment section. I see you. I never talk about the plants because I'm not a big plant guy. Okay. Whatever. I kill them all. It's not that I don't like plants. They just don't like me. Okay. Maybe I should water them. That's probably one of the things I should should probably do. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just, I'm not a plant guy, but I should probably water them. That might help. Plants. Plants are good because in the same way that I talked about natural materials earlier, they are the ultimate natural material. They're literally a living thing that lives inside your home. Like how cozy is that, right? Plants make a huge, huge difference because they just bring that life 
literally into your home. I talk about bringing life into the home in terms of wood choices, in terms of material choices, whatever, but this is literally bringing life into your home. And so you should just go do that, right? It adds like, to add oxygen into your space, right? It makes your space real, feel like it's fresher. It feels like you're more in touch with nature. And nature is naturally like calming and serene. And there's a reason why you go to a spa and everything's wood and then they got plants in the corner. Like there's a reason because it's just, it's, it's, it's comfortable, it's cozy. It makes you feel like you're in touch with nature without actually having going into it because sometimes nature's gross, right? You get to experience nature without actually having to go in it, which I'm a big fan of. And so I would definitely say that adding some plants in. Also, if you're not like a big plant person like me, you know, fresh flowers, these can really help. Like just ways that you can add in a little bit more light, a little bit more color. This makes a space feel really fresh and, and much cozier and, and gives, you know, just that little zhuzh that you, accessories. I sort of see plants as kind of like accessories in your space, right? We cover the floors, the light, the lights, we've got the walls, we've got what's inside, and now we're just accessorizing here. And plants, I think, are a really great way to do it. Before I go, I want to thank Drio again for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out their amazing product for their Black Friday sale, feel free to check those out. Okay, so that's it for me for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you want a little bit more of an in-depth look at this topic, I went through, again, some of the more subtle sort of aspects of cozy design, uh, and I'm gonna link it over to this video right here or here, whichever way. It I've been on YouTube for years, and I don't even know which way to point. I don't even care. Okay, one of those, you're gonna find that video. So go check it out. Thanks. See y'all on the next one. Thanks, bye.